Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, and in this video we'll talk about another archetype for Arkham Horror the card game. Today it's clue dropping. Let's get started, shall we? So we're talking about player cards that make you drop a clue that you have on purpose. But wait, I hear you ask, don't I need those clues? In most cases, yes you do. Clues are generally the way that you progress the scenario, but in some scenarios there are definitely more clues than you actually need to spend, or maybe all you need to do is remove clues from some locations in order to move on. But really, this archetype is about the benefits you get from dropping the clues and how they outweigh the difficulty of getting the clue back. For example, one of the cards that we'll look at cancels an encounter card in exchange for you dropping your clue. The cost of getting the clue back is usually an investigation action, so if you're on a fairly low shroud location, maybe the encounter card is much more trouble than getting the clue back. Now, since we're talking about getting clues, it shouldn't be so surprising that this is a seeker archetype, but actually all the cards released so far are level zero to two, so any off-class seeker can join in in the fun. We've talked about how getting a clue back might be an appropriate cost for whatever good thing you did by dropping the clue, but with the Scarlet Keys Investigator expansion, we now have a great payoff card that mitigates the cost by making it very easy to get the clue back. Let's look at research notes in some detail. First, once you drop a clue, and this is gonna require some other card because research notes doesn't do that for you, you place evidence on research notes. Then, once you've accumulated enough evidence, you can take a single action to test intellect zero and discover clues by spending evidence on research notes as long as you succeed by enough. What this allows you to do is drop clues on some irrelevant locations and then move over to a high shroud location and discover clues from that tricky location without having to investigate versus the high shroud. This is also a great way to bypass a locked door or something else that punishes you from using the investigate action. Now you can supercharge this strategy by having two research notes in play at once. Now, dropping one clue gets evidence placed on both of your research notes, so when it comes time to pick the clues back up, you're essentially getting two clues for the price of one. Note that you can only spend evidence from the copy of research notes that you're making a test on, so make sure you're dropping multiple clues first. This clue dropping strategy is a bit unusual in Arkham Horror, because you're essentially trying to spin your wheels for the first several rounds in a game. In fact, you want to drop clues as much as possible, but then you'll get an absolutely explosive payoff in a single action later on that bypasses difficult locations. Okay, keep research notes in mind as we go through some of the enablers. Remember, not only might you be setting yourself up for some big research notes turns later on, but you're also getting a benefit from these cards too. First up is Quick Study, which is incredibly simple. Drop a clue, exhaust it, and get plus three to whatever test you want. You could even do this for the research notes test itself, giving you essentially plus two clues discovered to that test, as long as you don't autofail. Oh, speaking of the autofail, why not just cancel it altogether with analysis? Placing clues on your location is no big deal in this archetype, and I've seen people deliberately drop all of their clues with analysis just to charge up two copies of research notes. Finally on this page is Forewarned, which is the encounter deck protection I talked about earlier. Great way to make sure the mythos does not get in the way of your shenanigans. Next up, we have two more ways to drop clues from the Scarlet Keys. Captivating Discovery turns your clues into filtered card draw. Might not be a bad idea if you need to search out some of the other goodies we'll get to later. This Zog Diagnosis is a little niche, but if you're playing one of the squishier seekers, it's good value if the clue drop is a benefit too. Finally, we have the jewel of the clue droppers, Dr. William T. Mailson himself. His level zero version is fine. If you don't like an encounter card, shuffle it back in and try again. Give him some XP though, and he'll work on something bigger. Now it works to protect any investigator at any location and lets you choose which of the two cards you want to draw first. The one that you didn't like, it doesn't go back into the encounter deck, it actually goes straight into this card pile, so you won't have to worry about it for some time. Now for some payoffs. These early cards are not really part of the clue dropping archetype per se, 
they really just are a nice way to take advantage of there being clues on your location. And since that's something you can control, these cards are a nice way to fill out a clue dropping deck. As long as there is a clue on your location, Inquiring Mind gives you three wild icons, and Preposterous Sketches lets you draw three cards. Same deal with Truth From Fiction and placing secrets on your own assets. Last, I threw Fieldwork in here since it gives you some bonus if there is a clue on a location that you move to. Probably this won't be a clue that you dropped, but who knows, maybe you can engineer that. All right, last up are the payoff cards from the Scarlet Keys. As if all this stuff wasn't good enough, you can also get an additional action if you drop a clue with Press Pass in play. What will you do with that additional action? Well, maybe you'll pick it right back up with Research Notes. So before we talk about some specific investigators, let's just run through a quick example as a review. Let's say you have two clues and you're at the lighting box location which itself has two clues and a locked door attached. Very sad. You would like to get those clues without getting rid of the locked door, so your mythos phase comes along and you draw treachery. Doesn't matter which one, just cancel it with forewarned. This will drop one of the, your clues on your location and you get to place an evidence on each of your research notes. Next, go ahead and exhaust that press pass so you can take an additional action during your turn. Well, let's use that action to do this research notes test, but in the player window during the test, we can use quick study to drop another clue and add another evidence to each of our research notes. Hopefully we can succeed by two and pick up two clues. For our next action of the turn, we'll do the test on our other copy of research notes. Again, we should probably succeed by two and clear off the location. That's one normal action to get four clues. That's not all that impressive since we had to drop two of our clues in the first place, but we did get to cancel treachery and not waste our time with a locked door. And we didn't start with any evidence on our research notes quite yet. Now that we have four clues, we can drop them all and get eight evidence on our research notes for the next time that we want to pull off this stunt. Okay, who wants to pull off these shenanigans in the first place? Let's start with Roland Banks, who doesn't mind dropping clues because he can just pick them up again with his ability. After you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. Now he's probably not gonna go with double research notes because he'd also like to have a free hand for his gun, which gets powered up as long as there are clues on his location. Quick study is already a fine choice for Roland, and you might make use of other parts of the clue dropping package too. Next is Roland's core set partner, Daisy Walker. She is a prime candidate for research notes because research notes is actually a tome. Daisy can use her tote bag to carry it and she can use her additional action on it no problem and her high intellect guarantees she'll pass the research notes test with flying colors. Next, let's look at a few investigators from the Scarlet Keys. Daryl Simmons can certainly play the clue dropping game and for him, he can use the extra evidence on research notes to reduce the difficulty of any test by two. If you happen to draw his elder sign, you can place evidence on research notes. That's basically an extra clue out of nowhere. Next is Vincent Lee. He can take all the cards we talked about and he's already interested in bizarre diagnosis in order to heal damage. He doesn't have any other particularly interesting synergy with dropping clues, but you might want to give it a try. Okay, for a fifth investigator, I chose Trish Scarborough. Her off class is Seeker, so she can take all the cards, but as a rogue, she's also interested in succeeding by X. Taking a test of zero every few turns is a great way to turn on Lucky Cigarette Case or any of the other powerful rogue succeed by X cards. Finally, Trish is of course thrilled with there being clues on locations as it lets her trigger her ability to automatically evade enemies. That then brings us to the end of this archetype guide. I hope you enjoyed looking at the cards with me. Clue dropping is a pretty interesting archetype that is now rather well fleshed out with all the cards released from the Scarlet Keys. It does require some interesting decisions and piloting, so that isn't so straightforward, but go ahead and give it a try if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with another video, but in the meantime, check out some of my other videos 
here on the channel.